Okay, so this started as kind of a part two to the where we are video, which is a video basically describing where we are in space geographically. Now that is in itself relatively easy to visualise, we live our day to day lives in three spatial dimensions, however we also live in a fourth temporal dimension, known to us as time, which is more difficult to visualise and talk about, but we're going to try and do that anyway. Let's do this. As I just mentioned, time is kind of like a fourth dimension, one which we are forced through with little ability to control. However, thanks to this dimensional type thinking, we can display a passage of time as a simple line on our screen with length measured in years, making it a lot easier to visualise with our primitive simian brains. However, time is so monstrously massive, perhaps even more massive than space itself, it can get very hard to visualise very fast, but uh, never mind, we'll try to fix that when we get to it later. We are here. Wait, hold on, let me try that line thing. Yeah, we are here. The line in this case is 20 billion years long, though in our case that line extends several thousand miles off the side of the screen to the right, because the future is potentially infinite. This is the past, this is the present, and this is the future. The present is a weird, instantaneous but malleable thing which for our purposes doesn't exist unless we're describing something relative to it. This end, where the past seems to begin, is where the Big Bang is located. The Big Bang, as you surely know, is a massive, rapid expansion that seems to have formed our entire universe, and while humanity as a whole is unable to figure out what came before, if before is even applicable, we can just ignore it. To quote the great scientist Stephen Hawking, Since events before the Big Bang had no observational consequences, one may cut them out of the theory and say that time began at the Big Bang. So if you disagree, go and blame him, not me. But for our purposes, this is the start of time itself. So to zoom in, here's our past. 13.8 billion years long. To try and to fail to put this in perspective, here's when stars started forming, here's the formation of the Milky Way, of the solar system, of Earth, of life, of multicellular life, complex multicellular life, of animals on land, and so on. Zooming in, we can try and see more detail. This second line is about 500 million years long. Our past is made up of 28 of these sections. Here's the geological time periods overlaid on top with the famous Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous periods where the dinosaurs were around. People don't realise how long dinosaurs were around relative to us before that asteroid came and mucked everything up. If we go to try and overlay our genus, Homo, hey, no laughing, on the line it would be exceptionally tiny. Wait, hold on a minute, I should probably clarify what a genus is. A genus is basically this family or group of species that have a common origin. Races are to a species as species are to genuses or geni. In fact, if we attempt to overlay Homo on the line, and the line is example a thousand pixels long, it would only take up five pixels. If we add the genus that Homo evolved from, Australopithecus, it would be eight pixels long. And this is only a 28th of our entire history. Yeah, we're gonna need another line. The third line is 5 million years long, and our past is made up of 2,760 of these sections. Each one of those black dots is its own picture, and I now know how much my editing software can take because this nearly broke it. And for scale, my massive super shiny modern screen puts this third line at about 30 centimeters long when this video is full screened. So I put the numbers in to try and measure how long the 13.8 billion year history is, and came out with this number. What the f Okay, so I've checked my maths both in plural and singular, and I've made a massive mathematical mistake, and this third line is 8,280 meters long, which is still pretty long, but actually visualizable. That's not a word actually able to visualize with a human mind, which is a good thing. That's how far away at this scale that the Big Bang is. The second line, just for example, is 8 meters long. Lesson of the day, time is huge and this is just the tiny, tiny, tiny bit we've gone through before the potentially infinite future, which we'll get to later. And I mean later, like not in this video, this is just the past. On this third line we can visualize the Australopithecus and Homo 
genuses or geni, as well as where we split from other closer apes up here, as well as different homo species like the first to walk upright, Homo erectus, I said no laughing, as well as the first to use tools, Homo habilis, and also Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Though when we add in the two main branches of Homo sapiens, yeah people don't know that there's two main branches, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens idaltu, things get a little cramped. So bring in the fourth line. This fourth line represents Homo sapiens, and here's the two main branches that I was talking about, and this one is extinct so we don't even need to worry about it. Anyway, oh well, so much for that. This one is our subspecies, the human race, Homo sapiens sapiens, conqueror of space and destroyer of world, singular. Our line is about 200,000 years long, which is still pretty big. And here's the line for the Stone Age, which in itself is about 3.4 million years long. Most people expect the Stone Age to be about 10,000 years long, but in reality virtually all of human existence has been located in the Stone Age until fairly recently. The only other things to note are the paintings in the Lascaux Caves here at 15,000 BCE, here's 0 CE, and here's the last ice age, where massive walls of ice extended as far south as here in the south of the UK. Yeah, again, this is massively bigger than most would expect. Everything is happening quicker the closer we get to now. We're also just going to need another line, so just a heads up for that. This fourth line is 10,000 years long, with us at one end and the birth of agriculture at the other end, which in turn triggered a huge massive change in human existence. For once in their existence, a few people cultivating crops could support an entire tribe, leaving the rest of the tribe to diversify and specialise and come up with skills that are useful, and it could leave the rest of them to explore and repopulate and trade and experiment and build tools and houses and cities and repopulate again and then build civilizations and societies and temples and ships and steam engines and computers. This is massive and why we're here now and not still living in a caveman-like existence that took up 95% of it. This happened relatively incredibly recently especially when compared to history we know, like 0 CE, the old middle and new kingdoms of Egypt, Greece and China. Hell, this is where you should know where things are in perspective, but just in case we're going to add in another line. This is our fifth and stretches from now to 0 CE, a date we've chosen to measure from for no particular reason. Well, I say we, Islam is kind of doing its own thing over there in the corner by themselves, but hey, that's a story for another time. Overlaid are the Romans, Byzantine, Holy Roman and British Empires, as well as various dates like the Battle of Hastings, Industrial Revolution, the founding of the United States and independence of Canada, the Crusades, birth of Charlemagne and the Tang Dynasty of China. At this point, I don't really need to go much further. You understand the scale and explaining it would be a waste of your and my time. However, I just want to add one more thing. Here's you. Here's your life. Well, that's an optimistic estimate, assuming you don't die of a nuclear apocalypse in the next year or two. Here's you, and here's everything that came before. Everything you've done, everything you could ever do, everything you ever will do, is on your screen right now. But I've had enough of depressing endings to hell with them. This tiny insignificance of both you and mankind isn't necessarily a bad thing. We're just looking at it from the wrong perspective. Our modern world may only take up nanometers, but look what we've done with it. For all this time, time and progress has almost been stationary, but in our brief blink, we've conquered nature and physics understood the very laws of the universe itself, artificially constructed machines to the work for us and think for us. No longer are we mostly dying of horrible diseases or wars or things beyond our control. We've broken down the building blocks of nature and become death, the destroyer of worlds. That shows our capability and the potential advancement is still accelerating. As a species, we are incredible. In an invisible slice of the universe, we have created so much, and there is so much potential in our future to do so many incredible things, beyond our belief or expectation. And as an individual, you are incredible. In an invisible slice of the universe, you have created and affected so much, and there is so much more potential in your future to do so many incredible things beyond your belief or expectation. Sure, you may not have much time left on this earth, but doesn't mean you can't do much with it.